Hi everyone and welcome to part 2 of my commission guide where today it's going to be all about the pricing. We're going to talk real numbers here and I'll give you some examples on calculations from real life as well. Last episode was sponsored by Skillshare and thanks to them I am able to kick my own butt in a friendly manner mind you <laughs> to make content for you guys. Without their sponsorship, I wouldn't have been able to find the time to make these video series, so naturally they're also sponsoring this part 2 of the series. And in case you missed it in the last episode, here's the drill. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on art, design, business and more. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of their classes and whether you're looking to learn something completely new or just want to brush up some old knowledge, Skillshare definitely have a class for you. For this guide on commissions, I have gathered some classes that I recommend on Skillshare about being a working artist and handling some of the professional aspects of being an artist as well. They're great to watch even if you're not working freelance, just to get some experience from other people who've been in the field for long. Find the links to the classes in the description below, I'll remind you later in the video as well. Because right now I offer two months free trial on Skillshare to the first 500 of you guys that click the link in the description below. A trial like this was actually how I discovered Skillshare in the first place. So hurry up and claim one of the 500 spots using the link below. And if you decide to stay after the trial, the annual membership is less than $10 a month. Last time we talked about how to build your info page, basically the landing page for your potential customers or customers, I referred to them as clients in the previous part, and we talked about how a process from the order coming in to finished product could look, and I gave you some personal advice and a whole blog post full of free resources. So if you didn't watch part one, I suggest you start off by doing that, right now. I'll just wait here, right here. Okay, I'm done waiting. So, you've set up the basic info page, image, whatever, with your samples of your work, but what should you charge for your art? I bet you've seen some artists taking commissions for as low as $5 for fully colored drawing, and others charging $300 and more for just a portrait. Artists who charge very little for the work are either new at taking commissions, just getting into art, or doesn't feel experienced enough to charge more. Artists who charge larger amount for their work usually have been doing this for a long time and they've been drawing for a long time as well. Artists who charge little amounts are often not dependent on the pay, whilst artists who charge more usually are partly or completely dependent on the income from the commissions. Artists who are in less demand usually also charge less whereas artists in high demand can charge more, and that doesn't necessarily have to depend on their skill level. Some incredibly good artists may not be in high demand, while someone with far simpler art style and maybe not quite as experienced may be in much more demand. And lastly, artists who charge less usually have a style or offer types of commissions that are very suitable to producing them faster compared to an expensive artist that might have a certain level of complexity in their work that demands many more working hours. In this video, I will be trying to guide you how to make fair prices based on your own living circumstances and reasons for taking commissions. So here are a few main pointers I usually highlight when people have come to me to ask what they should charge for their art. Time, experience, self-value, references slash level of detail, and lastly some advice specifically for traditional artists. Time. Consider how long it will take you to do a certain type of commission. Aim to get at least minimum wage for your time. You can probably just google the current minimum wage of your country, and if you're not dependent on the payment to make a living, you could charge less the minimum wage, but Try to consider if the time you'll spend on the commission then will be worth it in the end. Would you be willing, for instance, to work for less than $5 an hour? If the answer is no, ask yourself with a different amount. And keep asking yourself with different amounts until you reach the point where you can say yes and feel confident in it. I suggest you start a little lower, 
rather than too high when you're just getting started. You know, just to get the feeling of it, maybe start working around minimum wage and see how it feels. As soon as you start getting in demand, you can easily just raise your prices. And I will get back a little later on how to calculate a price based on an hourly wage, don't worry. But first, next subject, experience. It really does make sense that the more experience you have, the more you can charge for your work. Since you're most likely to get better as you keep drawing and taking commissions, it's only very natural that your prices will go up as time progresses. Once in a while, and especially in the beginning, take a look at other artists with similar skill level or style as you and look what they're charging for their art. Consider if this is the same kind of price range you'd like to buy in. It's okay not to have the exact same prices as someone very similar to you, but it's a really good way to get inspired and get a feeling of what other similar artists are charging for their art. Self-value. Putting value into your own work will not only show us confidence outwards, but will also give you a feeling that you're worth the hard work you put into your pieces. When you respect your work, your client most likely will too. And that feeds off a very healthy relationship between clients and artists in general. In some communities, winning the clients is like a war zone, sometimes consisting of people who undervalue themselves too much or just need to win over most clients or their competitors. The people ordering from the artists who participate in this kind of warfare for low prices are just as damaging as the artists pricing their work too low. For some people, your art is just as good as any other artist's. And the instant they see the prices are lower somewhere else, they'll order from the cheaper artists. This forces a lot of artists to keep lowering their prices until they are practically working for free. And not only does the artist overwork themselves, this misconception that an artist should be pressured to lower the prices to match whatever someone saw on Tumblr or something, starts so many of these horrible discussions where our community becomes divided where we should be standing together. Feel free to disagree, but this is actually a huge problem. So by respecting your own work, clients will most likely, as I said before, also respect your work. And when these clients go out to commission other artists, they'll most likely also respect that artist's work. And that's how it feeds off in a healthy community. Here's an example of why I charged $100 for a single half-body character with a simple background last year when I was a freelance artist. Because I know it seems like an outrageous price for many out there. In my country, I pay 37% in taxes. If I subtract that amount from the $100, I have $63 left. Since I was a freelance artist, I have to save up for my own sick days and vacation days. That is an additional 20% of the final price. 20% of $100 is $20. And then the calculation is $63 minus the $20, and now I have $33 left. Say a regular full body character took me 4 hours to paint. It varies a lot, but let's just take 4 hours for this example. Then for the money I actually earned to go buy food or pay my bills with, was earned for working for $10.75 an hour. That is below the minimum wage in Denmark, which last year was $16.65. So I don't actually earn much on my commissions, but they did help me save up for some equipment that I needed. If I was to live off only doing commissions, I should probably charge $25 per hour of work to get by and that would be just getting by to mind you. And I would need to always have customers and probably work 40 to 50 hours a week only doing commissions in order to make it work. And then there's YouTube, Instagram and all that other stuff besides the 40 to 50 hours. One last thing I want to say about self-value is that you should never, and I mean never, ever, Give in to people who threaten you to go to other artists instead or who try to make you lower your prices for them. Art is a luxury. No one needs your drawing to stay alive. So don't give in to people telling you that you're overpriced or not worth it. Some people will seriously say anything if they can get cheap or free art out of it. 
Just don't give in to these people, they are being horrible to you. References I personally raise the price for a commission if my client is unable to provide me with visual reference. Depending on the complexity of the written character's description, I add a fee for up to 50% of the final price because I'm likely to change this character's design a lot throughout the process until it matches the image that my client has in their head. And keep in mind that if you're commissioned to draw a character of very high complexity, this will most likely add to the amount of hours you'll spend on the drawing and this should or can affect the price as well. Specific advice for traditional artists. Remember to take into account that you're using supplies when working on commissions. Paper, pen, copics, watercolor, canvas, shipping, etc. Remember to take these aspects into account because they should definitely affect your price. If you can calculate some sort of average cost of your supplies per drawing, you can just add that amount on the top of the price you came up with based on your working hours. Calculating your prices. Oh, I hope you paid attention last episode when I advised you guys to make it a habit to track time on your drawings. That would really come in handy now. <laughs> Did you find that minimum wage you're willing to work for? If not, do it now. Ask yourself, am I willing to work for X money per hour? Write down the number you said yes to. Now, write out the types of commissions you'll be offering. How long will each type of commission take you? Multiply the number of hours with your hourly wage. That's the price for your time working on the commission. The client should at least pay you this. Now, you can't really know beforehand how many details an incoming commission will have, so call the prices you've calculated your base prices. Then you can add an additional fee for very detailed characters or extra characters in the drawing or detailed backgrounds. You can also just have fixed prices if that makes you more comfortable, however that means your wage can vary a lot depending on how complex your commissions are, because you can't change the price no matter how complex they are. If you need to include taxes on top of your prices, just get your tax percentages and find the amount from your prices. Most calculators can just add the percentage and then you have the final price with taxes included. There could be various reasons for why you don't need to add taxes, so feel free to just skip this step if that's the case. So, how do you get paid? <laughs> I personally use PayPal in all circumstances, unless my clients are Danish residents, like myself. Then I have some additional options for them. Some sites, such as DeviantArt, which is a popular site to do commissions, has a point system and a lot of users there will prefer to pay in points. But before accepting a website's own currency of payment for your work, you should investigate what you can use the currency for. It turns out that points on DeviantArt, for instance, can only be used for certain things on DeviantArt's own website and cannot ever be transferred back to real money. So look into the options in your own country and consider PayPal as well, because it's so easily accessible for so many people and it's also secure. So when do you get paid? Oh well, there are really many mixed opinions about this. I would personally never start on a commission without being paid at least 50% upfront. In such a case, I would stop work when I'm about halfway through and ask for the remaining 50% before finishing. Some people are not willing to pay 100% upfront, so you could suggest 50% now, 50% later. Just don't finish and deliver your work before you've been paid in full. I've heard about so many situations where people will just not be able to pay the last 50% when it comes down to it. And it's not necessarily because they want to scam you or anything, they might just not have the money anymore. Maybe they'll tell you that they have them by next week or next month, and that's fine. But just don't finish the work until you get them. Okay, I think I've said the things I found most important on the subject. Maybe one more little thing to address is that artists are doing commissions for very different reasons. Me, for instance, I owe my commissions if I need to save up for something 
or if I know I'm about to get a lot of extra bills. Some are just doing it because they want the experience and others might be completely dependent on their commissions to get by. So let's create a good community for commission artists and clients alike. Let's not tell others how much they should charge and also remind ourselves that art is a luxury. Not everyone can afford the luxury they want and it's definitely not the artist's fault. Okay, thank you so much for listening to my Chris voice all the way to the end. <laughs> Remember to claim one of the spots on Skillshare and check out the recommended classes I put in the description as well. Sorry if I was a little later with this video than I anticipated, but you know, <laughs> life happens. If you like my video or just appreciate the amount of fluffy flamingos in the video, <laughs> Give it a like and write whatever do you like pina colada in the comments and subscribe for more wacky art content. So until next time, take care. Bye.